just having an afternoon snack of coffee and candy corn. I feel like people either love candy corn or are repulsed by them. Let me know where you stand on candy corn. All right, the day has come five, pretty much five and a half months later since I purchased the Dyson Airwrap. I'm finally here with this guy, this very expensive guy that has hair coming out of it to give you my thoughts. So if you watch any of my vlogs, you've seen some of the Dyson trials over the months since I first purchased it. But because the air wrap is so freaking expensive, I wanted to wait until I felt like I really had a solid grip on the product, ways I like to use it, things I like, things I don't like, is it worth it, just everything. So it's now been about five and a half months of testing this. I definitely have my thoughts. I'm also gonna show you in this video how I do like to use it, certain things I've learned. There's definitely a learning curve with this product. I've tried this thing pretty much in, I think, every way possible at this point. I've tried it when my hair was super long, now when it's shorter, all the different barrels and attachments on fully wet hair, fully dry hair, in between. I have a feeling this is gonna be a really long video because I have a lot to say. So I will put timestamps down below. Why does timestamp sound so hard to say right now? Timestamps. In the description box, you can just jump to a certain section if you want to. If you enjoy this video while you're watching and find it helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out and I very much appreciate it. All right, let's start out with the basics. I'm gonna try and just kind of roll through this stuff because honestly, you can just find it on a website. This retails for $550. What comes with that is the carrying case. You get eight attachments. Technically, it's about six because they count the eight as the two pairs of the round barrel attachments, if that makes sense. So really it's six different kinds of attachments. Out of those six, I consistently use about four. It comes with short barrels. If you wanna purchase long barrels, you have to buy those separately for $40 per pair. So because I have two of them, the 1.2 and the 1.6, I spent an extra $80 on those so you cannot choose to only have the short or the long personally i think because these are available now dyson should 100 percent be giving people the option to only purchase it with long barrels or short barrels because you're not really going to be using both you can find these refurbished for about a hundred dollars cheaper on dyson's website or you can find them on ebay on hot look i've seen them on hot look for i want to say about like 350 refurbished on there keep in mind there's you know different return policies with refurbished products there is only a two-year warranty from dyson on this and that doesn't apply if you buy it refurbished personally i think that's a little bit ridiculous for a product that's over 500 dollars to only have a two-year warranty but you know, that's how it goes with dishwashers and a lot of laundry machines. Like those are expensive products and a lot of them only have two year warranty. The weight of it, which is important, especially if you have body issues, this is one pound, one ounce. To give you some comparison, the Revlon One Step is one pound. So it weighs about the same. It's heavier on the bottom and you're just holding it upright versus having to like move it around a lot. If you are gonna be purchasing this, I would recommend buying it somewhere where you can get cash back through Rakuten. This isn't sponsored by anyone, by the way. I bought the Dyson myself, not sponsored by anyone. I use Rakuten to get cash back anytime I buy stuff online. I'll have the link for Rakuten down below. It is an affiliate link, just an FYI. But I would try and wait till it goes to high cash back on either Sephora or Ulta and then purchase through there because sometimes it goes up to like 10%. So if you get like 10% cash back on this, that would be amazing. So the big thing with the Dyson Airwrap is that it's supposed to be healthier for your hair and it's also like multiple styling tools in one and it has a different kind of air technology where it's temper controlled, it never gets above 302 degrees they say and the technology is basically like a vortex air technology, that's the way they describe it, they're engineers, where instead of using extreme heat, it uses air to actually wrap your hair around the barrel. A lot of people say, and I've heard from you guys, like in comments on Instagram and stuff, that your hair does feel healthier than when you're using other heat tools with this thing. And I'd have to agree, I don't feel like this has damaged my hair at all. There are tons of Dyson tutorials and information on different websites if you wanna know exactly you know, how they recommend to use it and how other people use it. I've tried it in many ways and in the demo part of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to use it. Obviously, the main factor I think with this thing is that it is $550 and if you get the other attachments, the long attachments, which I do think are necessary if you have long hair, then it's an additional $80. So that's a, you know, that's a rent payment for some people. Personally bought this solely to test for you guys to make videos on to see if it's worth it because 
that's insane. The price of this, your budget, if it's worth it, all of those things depend on a lot of factors. It's ultimately your decision, but my goal of this video is to share my experience with it. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about if I do think it's potentially worth it after testing for a significant amount of time now. So quickly, I'm gonna share my most used attachments. I mentioned out of the eight, technically six, I use four most often. So my most used are the blow dry attachment. I almost just whacked myself in the head with this thing, which I've read is slightly less powerful than if you just get the Dyson blow dryer. The firm smoothing brush, I freaking love this thing. Gonna talk more about this in the demo. The round brush, I like using only if my hair is dry. I have a whole IGTV video on exactly how I like to use this attachment on dry hair. For me, if I use this on wet hair, I look like Simba, things are not looking good, but I am glad that I have found a way to make this one work because for a couple months there, I just thought I was never gonna be using that one ever. And then the 1.6 long barrels, which again, you have to buy separately, not the short ones. I was using the short ones for the first couple months. Those are my four most used attachments right there. Okay, the light's getting really intense, sorry about that. And then last thing is my hair type, just so you have some reference. So I have a lot of hair. I have fairly thick hair. I wouldn't say my hair is like the thickest. My mom has a lot of thick, thick hair. I actually showed using the Dyson Airwrap on her and how it didn't hold at all. I pop in some clips of that here so you can see what it might look like. Immediately looked amazing, but after we went to dinner and she was out in it was raining a little bit that night, so you know that's obviously a factor. And where you live, and the weather, humidity, all of that. I live in Seattle, and when we came back from dinner, her hair was just like a mop. It was not looking good. She did say that happens a lot with her hair, but the before and after was pretty extreme, so I just want to point that out. My hair is naturally wavy. I do have a lot of it. It does get very frizzy when I blow dry it just with like a normal blow dryer, so certain tools that I've found have really helped to eliminate that and eliminate the need for a flat iron after. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you everything and talk through everything. So cheers, let's uh, Dyson it up here. Okay, so I just got out of the shower and put my hair in a towel just for about like three minutes so it's not soaking wet now. And I actually just dyed my roots too. So if you see any uh, hair dye on my forehead, that's what that is. I'm just gonna style my hair one of the ways that I would with the Dyson and show you what it looks like and what I think and also just certain techniques and things that I've learned that really help my hair. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit of the Silk Elements heat spray. I love this stuff, it makes your hair super smooth and shiny. And this is one of the products that I use only when I'm using the Dyson, is the Redken Full Frame 07 Mousse. This stuff I find does help with the hold if you have issues with the Dyson holding in your hair. This is one of the only things that I've found that has helped the hold, but if you go overboard with this, it can give your hair like kind of a texture to it. So I just like to use about that much for both sides of my hair. And I keep it at the bottom too. Woo, just went flying. And then a little bit, whatever's left over on my bangs. So like I probably already mentioned, my favorite way to use the Dyson is if my hair is already like mostly dry or dry, the main kind of point of this tool is to bring your hair from, you know, wet to dry, it's a blow dryer, which you totally can also do, but I just find it adds about a half hour onto the styling process for me. So that's the main reason why I don't do it. And I get a similar kind of result with it on mostly dry hair. But to remove it, all you're gonna do is push down on here and lift up, it's super easy. I'm gonna start off with just the blow dry attachment. I'm sure there's a reason for this, but this thing I found slides off, which is interesting. And then it like magnifies up. I don't know why that's not just glued on there. So if I'm going wet to dry, about half the time I'll put on this and half the time I'll start with this. It just depends. This one is more just like an overall blow dry. And then this is the firm smoothing one. So it just gives a really nice smooth, I actually love this attachment. And sometimes even if I'm using a different tool, I'll go in with the Dyson with this attachment just to smooth over the top of my hair. It really helps control the frizz. So this is definitely one of my favorites and I feel like I don't have something like this that's like comparable in another tool. I'm gonna start off high heat, high air and just kind of do a pass. For some people it does work better to use these attachments when your hair is fully wet. So I have tried it both ways. Like I said, it doesn't make a huge difference for me, but if you're doing that, you'd want to just blow dry your roots. And when I'm doing that, I usually only go in with this one, not the blow dryer attachment, but I'm just showing you what's been working best for me and also trying to show you as many of the tools as possible. So I'm gonna go in with this. I would say I dried my hair about 30%. I'm not trying to get it like fully dry right now, 
and then I'm gonna go in with the firm smoothing attachment. So I've tried to use this all over too, just to see if it'll get my hair as straight as my Hot Tools round brush that I love. I've also tried to use this from wet to dry hair to see if I can get that blowout kind of look. For me, because of my hair type and just how thick it is, neither of these work to go from wet to dry for me. Okay, so this is as straight and smooth as I could get it with the firm smoothing brush from completely wet to dry. As you can see, the ends aren't looking great. Like the ends when I use my Revlon One Step look a lot better because you can get that kind of blowout, like turned under kind of look, but I also just feel like they look like a bit frizzy. It just looks kind of frizzy overall, actually. The rest of my hair, I'm just like really not digging. Like, look at this. It just looks not smooth. It just looks too frizzy and I don't get that smooth blowout kind of look that I can get if I use this on dry hair. So I have a whole IGTV video showing exactly how I do that and how I get that like, you know, nice straight smooth blowout look with this attachment. So I'm gonna use it just on my roots to really smooth everything over and I like doing this at the end of styling too, just in case I get any like flyaways as the air is pushing it up. You can also go in with it right at the end. Another way I really like to use this attachment is if I'm actually just straightening my hair like with a flat iron. You know how sometimes in the back when you try and flat iron your hair, you might have a couple bumps or your hair is not totally straight in a spot. If you just go over with this, right at the end and just do like a few passes. It just really smooths everything over, straightens it, and again, helps with any like frizz too. So those two attachments combined take me about six minutes total, six to seven minutes to get my hair to here. Obviously we're not styled yet. My hair is still a little bit damp at the ends. I would say it's probably like 20% wet right now. So it does have a little bit of wetness to it. I have so many different vlogs. I'm gonna link a few down below and the exact timestamps of where I use the different barrels throughout my trials of using the Dyson over the months. So if you wanna see me using these on my hair when it was super long, what it looks like, and just different times trying this, I'll link those videos down below. But today I'm just gonna go in as I would. These are the thicker ones, the 1.6 long barrels. And I also have the 1.3 long barrels. If your hair, I would say is like past here, the long barrels are worth getting because they do make such a difference because if you have a shorter barrel you basically have to wrap your hair on top of itself so you can see the difference in thickness they definitely give a totally different look one of my kind of gripes with using these is that for me it significantly falls out the next day but if i sleep on my back and i you know don't like roll over on them it does help but keeping in mind that they do fall a lot at least on my hair if you use the bigger one the next day it's going to kind of give more of a wave look and then if you use the tighter one obviously you're going to have more of a tighter curl i do still prefer the big barrel though when i had longer hair i love the way that one looks it just gives you like the prettiest bouncy waves the slimmer ones i haven't found a way that i really like using it yet when you get the Dyson, one of the most confusing things is trying to figure out which way the arrow should be pointing, which side of your face to use the product on. And the easiest way is you just wanna put it on and then whatever direction, when you look in the mirror, when I'm looking in the mirror, the arrows are pointed that way. And so that means I'm gonna go on this side of my face because I want them away from my face, if you want that look. Some people like them towards your face, but in general, if you want that really nice, you know, like, bombshell curls kind of look you want to go away from your face so i like to do it on the hottest setting hottest air i kind of just like feel my hair i can tell when it's kind of ready for the cool shot and this is the cool shot so this basically locks in the style because it gives you a burst of cold air and sets that curl so you're supposed to do this for about 10 to 15 seconds you just hold up another critique of just like the product design itself is i wish this just clicked in place i don't know why they make it so you have to actually hold it there because my bangs are different lengths they're a little bit tricky i'm probably gonna have some pieces falling out but I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest way to get this thing to wrap so some people can just hold it here and it just like perfectly wraps around I'm gonna show you what happens okay ironically that one actually wrapped usually it doesn't wrap that easy on me so I'm gonna show you what I normally do on the next curl after you do it if you want to help the hold just hold it in here for a few seconds I have tried bobby pinning it which a lot of people do or some people put actual like velcro rollers to really lock it in on me velcro rollers don't work well on my hair they cause a ton of frizz I just like to hold it let it cool for a minute and it's gonna look nothing like it's actually gonna look once we're done. So I'm just kind of letting the curl set there. Don't touch it. You don't want to touch it or it's just going to fall way easier. When you're grabbing sections, you don't want to grab too big. I probably grab about an inch wide section. You don't want to grab too much here because then it's just going to be wrapping on top of itself and you'll have issues with it holding there and actually wrapping around the barrel. 
Each time I'm doing this, I am holding the cool shot, by the way. And then again, just kind of holding it. So right now I'm having really good <laughs> gripping where it just is wrapping around the barrel really nicely itself. Sometimes the angle can make a difference. Like I have a harder time when I do this side of my hair, getting it to wrap on its own. So I'll show you what I do on this next curl. But if you have issues with it wrapping, two things might be happening. You might be holding it like this. It's not gonna wrap all well if you're holding it sideways. You wanna hold this tool always up and down. Another thing you can do is hold it closer to the end so that it has an easier time just picking up that hair first and then you'll kind of take your hand off as it wraps itself around. But what you can also do if you just can't get that technique down or you're having issues is you can actually pre-wrap it around and then turn it on. So you can see as I'm doing this, because the air kind of is going upwards, I do get a little bit of just frizziness. So that's why at the very end, like I said, I like to go back over with this just to kind of tame those down again. So I don't obviously, as you can see, clip my hair up as I go. I, I never do that when I style my hair. I just find it so much easier to work from front to back. I don't like working in layers because then you have a mixture of like damp hair down here and dry hair down here when you drop it on top. So I just like, going in order from front to back. You also wanna make sure you're holding it behind the piece of hair. You don't wanna start in the front. Actually, I'll just show you what happens. It just won't grab because the air is blowing the other direction. So you just wanna go behind it and make sure you're not holding your hand here because if you do, it'll have a harder time grabbing it because you're grabbing it. So you wanna just hold it higher and then let it wrap around and again, hold it pretty vertical. So you can see how short my curls are right now compared to this side. It's gonna fall a lot. And also we're gonna do a little zhuzhing with my fingers at the very end. I'm actually gonna hairspray right now just so it doesn't fall too much on its own. Just using the color Wow Hairspray. I have a few hairsprays that I love. I'll link them down below. Love the Pureology one. One thing that can also help is actually giving it some resistance. So when you see me going back and forth, kind of down and up, it's creating more resistance and kind of bringing the hair closer to the barrel. What some people like to do is on the top, you can actually go this way, but with the other barrel, see how this is pointing down. If I do that, it's not gonna grip. You wanna use the other barrel. If you're going over your head, almost do like a hot roller kind of look where you put them up so that it gives you more volume. That was a really good one, just the way it gripped. I got the perfect amount of hair, the right angle, great one. So when I'm styling it wet to dry like I'm doing right now, it's not fast. It definitely, at least for me, is a solid, I would say about 40 to 50 minutes, sometimes even an hour. I did that a couple times in Hawaii because we would like swim during the day and my hair would be wet and then I would be styling it wet to dry for dinner. It definitely takes a chunk of time. So for me, it's not like a tool that's any faster, but it does look really good. Like I said, whenever I do style my hair with this thing, like people notice and comment on my hair, it definitely gives a different kind of look. So for me, I think wet to dry is worth it if I'm doing it for like a special dinner, a special occasion, something like that. It's not just like, a weekly kind of styling thing for me. But if I want my hair to look extra good, I will do it wet to dry and like I'm doing right now. So I just wrapped up this side of my hair. You can see it already has fallen. I haven't touched it. I did hairspray it again. It's not gonna look like this <laughs> once I'm done. So when you do the other side, you need to switch the barrel. So I'm gonna do the unlock button. You don't wanna grab this because it's hot. I've got the little pink thing, which still gets a little bit hot. It's not like totally heat resistant. And then slide the other guy on. And by the way, you can see my tools are already like chipping in certain spots, like right there and a couple little marks on some of the barrels too. So I don't know, for $500, I'm like the color shouldn't be uh, peeling off Dyson. This side of my head for me is always harder to style, whether it's just with a curling iron. It's a little bit trickier, just like the angle and whatever. So sometimes I really have it down on this side. Sometimes it takes forever and is a little bit of like, you really gotta think about it, you know? I'm gonna do one more hairspray over here for good measure. Also, you can see the difference in shine on this side versus this side. I feel like that happens with most hot tools. I do think my T3 ones make my hair very shiny. Okay, so here's my hair all curled. I'm gonna do another hairspray. If you're using the Dyson, you're gonna crank through the hairspray. This side actually turned out really well today. I don't know, it was just way easier. But as you can see, I have a few 
flyaways up here. So that's what we're gonna use the smoothing brush for. I'm actually gonna put it on medium now, just, I don't know, I don't feel like I need high heat right now. So as you can see, that got down most of the flyaways up there and most of the frizz. If you have a lot of flyaways and you really like to tame them, I've been really liking this stuff. I got it off Amazon, it's the 24 hour edge tamer. Don't love the scent, smells like straight up purple Jolly Rancher, smells extremely sweet, but you only need like a very tiny amount of this unless you want the top to be pretty sticky. So just use the tiniest amount and brush those down. This is what it looks like once I'm all done with using the Dyson, but I'm not gonna like comb it out or anything because like I said, it's gonna continue to fall. Right now I really just want it to set in place and just kind of lock in there. So I'm gonna do my makeup and then I'll show you and come back what it looks like. So here's a good look up close. Tons of volume. I don't get this kind of volume when I use a curling iron and I think that's what kind of differentiates it. One of the things, but it also just, it gives this different kind of look. So I'm gonna put it to the back so you can see. This is a flexible hold hairspray by the way. So my hair isn't crunchy or anything, which is really nice because I'm using a crap ton of it. I'm doing my makeup and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about two hours since you last saw me, did my makeup, ate some lunch, got some things done and now I'm here. So here's what my hair is looking like. All I did was add a little bit of the Orbe oil just to the ends and right to the top. As you can see, it's fallen a lot. Remember when we first started, it was like up to here. I don't love the look of these curls quite as much as I did with long hair. I still think it looks nice, but it just falls different. I'm gonna start a clip of what this looks like in the morning when I wake up so you can see how it wears on my hair after a day. I almost always have to touch up my hair no matter what I'm styling it with, whether it's you know the flatter and the hot tools thing. So it's not out of the ordinary for me to have to do that. Here it is the next morning. So as you can see, it has fallen, but it's not bad. Like I could totally wear it like this. I'm probably gonna add a couple curls just in the front here today. And I had it up in a bun for a couple hours. So it's not bad. It's actually, it's looking pretty good this time. It always depends. Sometimes it's a little funkier just depending on how I slept and everything, but I definitely think the Redken product helps. All right, so is it worth it? Overall thoughts, wrap this up. Well, obviously $550 is a huge chunk of money. So we know it's not cheap. I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your $550. The price point you'll have to figure out for yourself if you know it makes sense for you in your situation and you're interested, but I'm just gonna speak to if it's worth it for me. Like if I think that price point is getting enough use and is justified, I keep looking down on my toe that has hair dye fully all over it right now. Couldn't get that off, just stained my dough. Like I probably said a few times, I haven't been able to get this kind of look with any other product before. I love the volume it gives. It definitely looks like you got your hair done. So I do think it kind of eliminates it. Maybe if you're someone who goes to get a blowout or for a special event, like if you went to a salon, it kind of does eliminate the need for that. If you can get it down and figure out a way you like it. The only other attachment out of all of them that I feel like is kind of irreplaceable is the firm smoothing brush. So these two, I don't have anything that compares to them. Everything else, like the blow dryer attachment, this thing, I can get the same look with the hot tools or rub on one step. Yes, those are more damaging, but just look wise, like I can, you know, get a similar look for way cheaper. So I am way past the return date at this point, but if I had the option, would I pay I didn't even pay 550, I paid 630 because of the long attachments. So would I pay $630 again? Oh my God, saying that out loud. I don't think so. I think if Dyson came out with the option to just have the long barrels so you don't have to pay an extra $80 on top of something that's already so expensive, maybe. I do really like the way it looks, but I don't know, man, for that much money, like maybe if it was 300 which is still really expensive but that just sounds like a little bit more reasonable than over 500 dollars there is a return policy so if you try it and you don't like it you could return it you could try it out and see if it works for you and see how much you actually use it because i think that's what it's going to come down to is how often do you normally blow dry your hair how often do you normally style your hair can you figure out a good routine to use the Dyson products with your hair and how much use do you think you'll actually get out of it. A lot of people do say it significantly cuts down their styling time. I think it just depends on your hair, how much you have of it, how easy your hair is to style to begin with. Obviously someone who has super curly hair is gonna have a totally different experience than someone who has straight and thin hair. If I could buy just this with this for like $150, $200, I would totally do that. Like I do really like the way that this 
looks and just like that different kind of look I can get with it. So I think you just need to think about all the factors for yourself. This isn't something that's necessary, you know what I mean? It's just an interesting beauty tool with interesting technology. I will say for a while I was using the Revlon One Step and I did start to notice more just like split ends and dryness on the bottom of my hair. So I've since stopped using the Revlon One Step. And instead if I'm wearing my hair straight, I'll use hot tools. This one so far has been really great for me and just looks incredible if I'm wearing my hair straight. So if you're someone who's debating getting this mostly to wear your hair straight or like that blowout look, I would say just get this one instead. It's way cheaper and works better in my opinion, just for straight looks. But obviously the point of the Dyson is to have multiple looks and be healthier for your hair. So if this video is helpful for you, you can give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, you can subscribe. I do lots of beauty videos, some hair stuff, vlogs, combo of everything, you know? Let me know if you wanna see like an eight month or a year update, but I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video, bye.